What's good YouTube, it's Adam from I'm Music Mobile. Welcome to a brand new video. Today is Logic Day. We are getting Logic Pro 11 and Logic Pro for iPad 2. A lot of good stuff, a lot of AI here in this new Logic update. So let's get to it. Kicking things off, we are getting two new session players, bass player and keyboard player. So let's go ahead and bring in a bass session player. If I go ahead and double click on this region, we can go ahead and edit everything that's happening in this performance. Over on the left hand side, we can change the complexity of the performance or the intensity. So I'm going to make this a little bit more simple. You'll notice that the pattern gets a lot more simple. We can go ahead and change the phrasing to long so that the notes will be really long. You can change the chord rhythm. You can also make it follow a certain track. Right now we don't have anything else, but we'll come back to that in a moment. Over in details, we can go ahead and take out these double stops here. So if you don't like these little, that right there, you can go ahead and remove that just like that. You can really fine tune your bass performance to exactly how you want it. If you notice along the top here, there is a new thing in Logic Pro for Mac and iPad 2 is this chord track. So right now the bass is following this chord progression, C major, F major, C major. Now if we go ahead and add in another session player, for example, the keyboard, it's going to follow that chord progression. So we're going to go ahead and create a new session player. We'll change it over to keyboard player. And now it's going to follow that bass pattern. like the bass player, you have so much control over the keyboard player as well. Over on the left, you have similar controls, the complexity or intensity of the performance. So let's lower down the complexity, complexity and make it a little bit more simpler. We can change how you, wide you want your hand placement to be on the keyboard. So do you want it really low and really high or do you want it a little bit closer together? You could just use this sort of slider here and move it around and it'll automatically change the performance for you. what the left hand will play as well as the right. In the details tab, there is the grace notes control. So that will just add little licks in between notes just to make it a little bit more realistic sounding, a little bit more interesting. Let's go back to the main tab over here. We'll go over to our rhythm and we'll make sure that we are following not just the chord map over here, but as well as the bass track. So we'll go over to our contemporary soul, which is our bass track. to this a little bit further. If you don't want to stick to the C major scale, you can change that. We can go over to our global scale manager over here. We'll go over to, let's say B minor. We'll transpose all those chords. And now we are in the key of B minor. You can also go ahead and select a chord progression type. Go to the one, three, six, seven progression. Now you'll notice that our chord map on the region is different from the global chord map. And that's okay, you can have different ones on different things, but uh, we can go ahead and print that to the global map so all of our other session players follow. If we just control click on this region and go down to chords, we're gonna go over and select paste region chords to global track. So what that will do is change all of our global chords to the ones that we had on this region. And if you noticed, our bass pattern will change as well because it is going to follow that new chord progression. And you can even take it further if you don't like the chords that Logic gives you. You go into your chord track, double click on a chord and change the chord to whatever you want it to be. Again, you have so much control on how you want these session players to sound and what you want them to play. It's literally unlike anything else on the market currently. It just sounds so realistic and good. And the reason why it sounds so realistic and good is because there's two new plugins for the bass player and keyboard player. For the bass player, we have a new plugin called Studio Bass. And for the keyboard player, the new plugin is Studio Piano. And these sound incredible. Now these plugins are not only for the session players, you can use these plugins as your own instrument as well. You can find them under Studio Piano and Studio Bass. Next, we have a native stem splitter in Logic Pro. You can split any finished recording into four categories, drums, 
bass, vocals, and other instruments. So here we are in Logic Pro for iPad 2. I'm gonna go ahead and swipe over and bring in the BBL Drizzy track. And we're gonna go ahead and stem that out. So all you gotta do is click on the region or just tap the region with your finger. Go to Stem Splitter. You have the four different categories here, vocals, drums, bass, and other. And then you go ahead and click split. Logic will do its thing. And now we got BBL Drizzy split into four different categories. Once again, vocals, drums, bass, and other. And we can go ahead and mix this or sample how we like. BBL Drizzy. BBL Drizzy. So that would be really useful if you have any old recordings and need to take an element from that. You can just use stem splitter. Or if you're sampling and you want just the bass or melody portion, now it makes it easier than ever to sample just what you need. Next up, we got Chroma Glow, and this is my favorite addition to the new Logix. Chroma Glow has been modeled after analog hardware that gives that classic, polished, saturated, warm sound. You have a couple different model types. You have retro tube, modern tube, which is really nice on vocals, magnetic, squeeze, and analog preamp. You can bypass anything below a certain frequency. So if you don't want that kick to really muddy up or distort the sound, you can just take that kick out. You also have filter controls and EQ controls for your low cut and your high cut for pre and post as well. I haven't been this excited about a plugin for a minute. Chroma Glow is that plugin. Next, I wanna take you through other new standout features in Logic, and one of them has to do with instrument plugins that have MIDI output. You know, sometimes in Contact or other instruments, it has like this chord generator or like a melody generator, and you wanna take that melody in MIDI and apply it to another sound or instrument, but you can't get it because the notes that you're actually recording is just a single note, but when these notes actually play, it's playing a full chord. So in Complete Control, as you may know, you have an ability to add chords or an ARP to it. So, and sometimes you just wanna take that performance and apply it to another instrument, for example, a stock Logic plugin. And now there's a really easy way to do that. So what we're gonna do is click create a new software instrument track. And we're gonna go over to our track tab over here. And under the internal MIDI in, we're gonna go ahead and change it to instrument output to our track that we wanna record the MIDI from. So in this case, we only have one other track. It is track one, complete control. I'm gonna record and enable our track and I'm gonna hit record. Now watch the MIDI that's gonna be recorded in. So now we get that performance, that complete control was spitting out in a MIDI format. And we can take that performance and apply it to any other sound. So let's put it to a lead sound, for example. So I think for many, that is gonna be clutch. There's also some new sound packs as well. We get sound packs from Corey Wong, Hardwell for you DM producers out there, as well as some nice drums from The Count. In your loop browser, you'll notice some new loop icons here. Those loops with that icon will give you the ability to bring it in, have a chord map, and then bring in a session player to play along with it. I'm gonna bring in this Apple loop right over here. And as we drag it in, you'll notice it has a chord map with it. So now if we want to add a bass, we can just create a new session player track with a bass player on it. And it will follow this pattern. Also new on software instrument tracks, you'll notice there's input monitoring. Also new is real-time audio bounce in place, which is really useful if you're using external equipment. And also in Dolby Atmos, we now have down mix and trim controls. So when you export your ADM BWF file, it's gonna have all this metadata in there for when you're playing it on different speaker setups. So you will have more control on how it will sound on various different setups. You can use the automatic mode or you can adjust it manually. There's also a new Logic Session, Ellie Dixon Swing. So so that's cool. If you are using Logic Pro for iPad 2, I highly recommend going to the Learn and Explore page as it'll take you through an interactive tutorial on how to use the main features in Logic. Really useful to learn everything that's new and Logic in general. And that's some of the notable features from the new Logic Pro 11 and Logic Pro for iPad 2. Now, is it everything we wanted from Logic Pro 11? In my opinion, Yes and no. We got some great features. We got Chroma Glow, which I love. We got new session players, bass and keyboard. We have stem splitter, a lot of AI technologies in these new versions of Logic, but it's not quite the update that I feel or felt that 11 should get. We've been on Logic Pro 10 for so many years now, and I think 
a Logic 11 iteration should have been a little bit more substantial in my opinion. For one, I would have liked some UI more aesthetic changes to the actual software itself. I mean, we do have some small notable changes in the UI, but it's not substantial to give you that sort of new feeling that this is a Logic Pro 11. I wish we got plugin tiles from Logic Pro 2 for the Mac version. I really wish we got some updates to some of the classic Logic plugins that has been updated in a while, visually I'm speaking, like the ES2 for example. But these are just things that probably don't matter to many. Most producers, most professionals don't like change, so maybe that's why they decide to go that route. For me personally, I like a little bit of an update, an updated look, some new aesthetics, just to give me a new UI feel to it, just to let me know that, hey, this is new, fresh, and exciting. Not that Logic Pro isn't exciting, it definitely is, but I wish we got that visual appeal as well. But I'm not too worried about that because Logic Pro 11 is a free update for current Logic Pro users. You don't have to shell out more money for the update like other does. No, this one is a free update. And the Logic Pro for iPad 2 continues with the same pricing format as well. $4.99 a month or $49.99 for the year. So that right there was a general deep dive in the new versions of Logic Pro, Logic Pro 11. Logic Pro for iPad 2. If you do have any question on this or just want to discuss anything, let's go ahead and chat down below. I will be making a deep dive video into each of these new features, so stay tuned for that. A lot of great stuff in Logic. I am loving the update, and I'm sure you will as well. Later, guys. Peace.